Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here to give you a quick demonstration of how to use Adyen as your credit card processor in NetSuite. This video is being recorded in September 2021 on NetSuite version 2021.1. So what is this video going to cover? I'll give you a quick summary to make sure you're not wasting your time by watching this. This video covers two main things. First, how to set up Adyen as your credit card processor in NetSuite. And second, once you're taking credit card payments, you then run into the challenge of reconciling what payments you've actually received from Adyen into your bank account. So to deal with that, Adyen provides a NetSuite bundle for payment reconciliation. I'm going to show you how to set up both card processing and payment reconciliation. So what do you need to get started? Simple. You need a NetSuite account, and you need to have administrator access to it. Second, you need to have an Adyen account. So, let's get started. What I have here is a fresh, brand new Adyen test account. And what I have here is a NetSuite test account. These two accounts have not met before, so let's see if we can get them talking. First, we need to add Adyen as a payment processing profile in NetSuite. Let's go to Setup, Accounting, Payment Processing Profiles, New. Now if you're like me and you haven't used Adyen in this account before, you'll have to install the plugin first. But let's pause for a second so I can show you where to find the documentation for this process. Let's take a look here at docs.adyen.com. In the menu on the left, click on Plugins, and then click on NetSuite. Now click Set up Adyen Customer Center. Okay, great. Now we can follow these steps to make sure we're doing this correctly. One of the Adyen bundle requirements is that you have NetSuite's Chargeback Workflow bundle installed already, so let's do that first. So in NetSuite, we'll go to Customization, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles. Let's search for Chargeback Workflow. Here it is. So we'll go ahead and install this. On this next screen, go ahead and click Install Bundle. OK. This part usually takes a few minutes. OK, that bundle's installed. So that's step one complete. Now step two is installing the Adyen Suite Payments Bundle. So let's install that now in NetSuite. The bundle we want here is the Adyen Payments Bundle for NetSuite. Go ahead and install it. Again, this part will probably take a few minutes. I'll refresh the bundles page to see if it's installed. OK, and there it's finally finished. OK, so now that the bundle is installed, we can come back to creating the payment processing profile. So back to Setup, Accounting, Payment Processing Profiles, New. So now next to Adyen, I should have the Enable and New option. So I'll go ahead and click that. Now most of this is self-explanatory, but I'm going to bring up the directions next to this so we can see what we're doing. So back on the Adyen Instructions page, let's click on this Create a Payment Processing Profile link here. Now most of this is pretty self-explanatory. We don't need to select a website. We can enter in a name. For the name of the payment processing profile, I'm just going to enter in Adyen. I do need to select my subsidiary. For currencies, I'm just going to leave it on US dollar for now. One thing I'm going to do here is set mine to test mode, since I'm not processing any real payments in this account. You might do this also if you're in your sandbox environment initially. Now the first tricky part here is the authentication credentials section. The documentation says that this needs to be our web services user, so let's find that in our Adyen account. Here in the Adyen account, let's go to Developers and API Credentials. Let's click on the web services user here. So first, let's copy and paste this whole username into NetSuite. 
Now for the password, you can use this Generate Password button to make a new password. Make sure to save it. I'm going to copy and paste my password into this field in NetSuite. And in the Adyen account, another important thing you want to do is scroll down to the bottom and click on the Accounts tab. Usually by default, Access is disabled for new accounts, so we might need to switch on Access for the account we're working on. I'm saving my account to update this. The next thing we need is our merchant account ID. You'll find this if you click on your profile at the top left of Adyen. This long thing here is my merchant account. So I can paste that into the merchant account ID field. The next thing to enter here is the production endpoint domain prefix. If you're setting up a live account, you'll want to refer to the instructions here to get the endpoint URL from your Adyen account. For my test account, I'm just going to enter in CA test. Now I can scroll down to the payment information section. Here I'm going to select the card types that my Adyen account is set up to accept. Then on the gateway request types, per the instructions, we'll deselect credit, but leave the others selected. And that's it. Now we can save our payment processing profile. Now let's test it to see if it works. So here I have an invoice that needs to be paid, so I'll click Accept Payment. I'll go to the Payment Method tab. I'm going to enter in a new credit card using this Adyen Test MasterCard that I found online here. Now I'll go ahead and save the card. I'm going to enter the CSC of 737. And I'm going to set the account on the payment to undeposited funds so that we can reconcile this payment later using a bank deposit transaction. I'll go ahead and save the payment. Okay, great. So it looks like that's gone through. Now if we check the payment method tab again, we can see the operation details here and confirm that it was successful. Now if we go back and check our Adyen account, we should see this payment there. And here it is. Okay, so part one is done here. We are now successfully connected with Adyen for card payment processing. So now we're going to look at how to reconcile these payments. We'll start by installing the other Adyen bundle for bank deposit reconciliation. So I'll go to Customization, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles, and type in Adyen. And here's the Adyen Bank Deposit Reconciliation Bundle. Go ahead and install this. Again, this should probably take a couple of minutes. Okay, once that's installed, let's start by downloading the documentation file. This may help with the setup process. So first let's go to Setup, Integration, Adyen Integration Settings. Now this is very similar to the credentials we just entered on the Payment Processing Profile. The domain prefix will be the same as what we entered there, but for this the credentials we need are the reporting users. So let's get that from our Adyen account. We'll go back to Developers and API Credentials. This time I'm going to click on the reporting user. Again, we'll copy this username. And then you'll probably need to generate a password for your reporting user. And again, let's make sure that the account is enabled for this. It's not, so I'll go ahead and enable that now. Click Save. Okay, so I pasted in my password and saved this. And there's one more thing I want to show you back in Adyen. You'll hear me say SDR a lot here, and it stands for Settlement Detail Report. This is the daily report that Adyen outputs that specifies which transactions have settled into your bank account. And what we want to do here in our Adyen settings is ensure that these reports are set to be generated automatically. 
So let's go to the reports menu and scroll down to settlement details. And let's click on automatic generation and switch that on. Let me refresh this page just to make sure. So it looks like it's enabled now, so that's great. So back in NetSuite, the next thing we need to do is set up our SDR profile record. To do that, we'll go to Transactions, Bank, Add Yen SDR Profile, New. So most importantly, let's enter in our merchant account ID and select our subsidiary. Next, the deposit account is the bank account that your Adyen account will be settling to. The currency is the currency of that account. Next, we have the invoice correction account. I don't think I've ever seen this get used in real life, but my understanding is that it would be used if there was a mistake in your Adyen invoice. So I have a GL account for credit card processing expenses, and I'm going to use that here. Same goes for the Commission, Markup, Scheme, Interchange, and Fee accounts. Now let's talk about this Deposit Balance Adjustment account. If you've worked with Adyen, you know that they always hold back some money as a deposit perhaps in case you go out of business tomorrow and they need to refund people back for you. For this, I have a card processor deposit account that is of type Other Current Asset. And for this FX Adjustment account, I'll use the Rounding Gain Loss account. For the Error Notification email, I'm going to enter in my own email address. Now if you leave this Automatically Create Deposits checkbox unchecked, then when your SDRs are matched, you'll have to click an Approve button before the bank deposit transaction gets created. If you check this box, the bank deposit will be created automatically with no human interaction. So next we need to create our settlement type map. So click on New. For the name, I'm just going to enter Default. This record controls details about how transactions are matched. You usually won't need to change anything here, but it's good to know it exists in case something goes wrong. For now, let's save it as it is, and then save our Adyen SDR profile. And that's the setup process done. Now to test this, we just need to wait until Adyen settles the payment that we processed a little while ago. And that's the one thing I can't demonstrate real time here. In my experience, the settlement seems to happen right around 4 p.m. Pacific time. So I'm going to pause this recording, and I'll come back to it later to show you the rest. Okay, it's later. And let's check to see if our Adyen settlement detail report is here now. Here it is. And I'll mention that for some reason, it actually took two days for this one to be created. I think maybe I missed the time cutoff with the payment we did on Wednesday. So let's take a look at it. So in the detail lines is where you'll see the details of the transactions that were processed. So this top line here is the payment that I processed the other day. I'll also briefly mention how and when this record was created. If we look at the system notes, we see that this record was created at 6.47 p.m. yesterday evening. What we have is a scheduled script that runs every evening that pulls Adyen for any new settlement detail reports. It runs every day automatically, and so this record was created automatically right on schedule. And then it was processed by a second script that filled in the lines. But look, we actually ran into a problem when we tried to match these lines to transactions in NetSuite. The status of the settlement detail report is exceptions need resolving. This is because no matching transaction was found in NetSuite for this payment. But wait a minute, we definitely entered this payment into NetSuite, didn't we? This is a common issue we run into, and I'm going to show you how to solve it now. First, I'm going to show you the technical troubleshooting side of this. Don't worry if this goes beyond what you're comfortable with. I'm going to show you the solution right after this. What I want to point out is that if you ever have an SDR that is failing to match and you can't figure out why, it might help to check the script execution logs. 
So let's go to customization, scripting, script execution logs. And let's look at the logs for the add yen find SDR detail matches script. So my SDR was pretty small, so we have a very short list of logs here, thankfully. What I want to point out is this log here, where it says find transaction search filters. This shows what the exact filters of the search are that NetSuite used to try to find the transaction. So we can see here that it was searching for cash sales and customer deposits, where the PN ref num matched the reference number on the SDR detail line. So the problem is, we entered a customer payment transaction, and that's not included here in the transaction type filter, so that's why it didn't find a match. So now for the solution. To fix this, we need to go back to our SDR settlement type map. We can find this on our SDR profile record here. So this first settled field controls which saved search is used to do transaction matching. So let's take a look at this saved search. So we can see here, like we saw in the logs, that the type filter only includes cash sale and customer deposit. So I'm just going to edit this and add in customer payments as well, which are just called payments in the list here. And now we're not going to overwrite the existing saved search, but instead we'll do a save as. This is because if you were to just overwrite the search that comes with the bundle, the next time you update the bundle, your changes would be overwritten. So now let's update our settlement type mapping with the search that I just created. Now let's go back to the settlement detail report and click the rematch transactions button. This should take just a minute. Okay, great. So now our SDR is fully matched and it arrives in the pending approval status. We can see here that it found our payment transaction successfully. I'll go ahead and click approve so the bank deposit can be created. So now it's in the creating deposit status and this should take just a minute. Okay, great, now it's complete. Let's take a look at the resulting bank deposit transaction. And here it is. This shows the NetSuite transactions from the SDR are now deposited in my bank account. And that's it, we're done. Now we can sit back and let the scripts run on their own schedule. I know setting this thing up isn't that much fun, but now that it's done, everything should just run automatically every day, and I only have to manage any exceptions that arise. To do that, I'll quickly show just how to add a list of settlement detail reports to your home dashboard. If it's your job to keep an eye on these, it's worth having it here. I'm going to click Personalize. I'm going to add a list. Click Setup. We'll do add yen settlement detail reports, and we don't need to allow inline editing, so let's save that. And here's our list. So now every day when I come in, I should see the latest add yen settlement detail reports here, and hopefully the status will be complete after it's been approved. I also mentioned that the deposit date is just blank because this is a test account and there was no actual deposit to a bank account, but in real life you should see the date that the money arrived in your bank account here. And that concludes the demonstration. Let us know if you have any comments or questions. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you at Sweet World.